Jake, I want to take a moment here and review the lesson we had the other day. When we take a look at the picture that's on the screen right now, this is where we initially started. Uh, when we started, we initially talked about your stance. If you being a pitcher, being in a, uh, playing baseball in college, you know, one of the things you do realize and one of the things you look at all the time is trying to be in a, a athletic position when you throw the ball and or when you field the ball. So as you do these things, one of the things you try to keep in, keep in consideration is trying to be in that balanced position to be able to transfer your weight from one side to the other, to be able to move at an instant's notice and be able to do what you need to. So when you take the first initial look at your stance, you can see that a lot of your weight is sitting back on your heels. So what the first thing we did was try to get you a little bit more athletic position. Had you get up, up and over the top. I didn't move you back any further. I just repositioned. Had you stand straight up, lean forward, flex your knees. Um, and as you flex your knees, you, uh, you bend, bend from the waist, get in that right there. You can kind of see your stand straight up, flex, and kind of feel yourself get down onto the balls of your feet. Ideally, always stand on the balls of your feet or in a position that the weight is a little more forward instead of sitting back. Allows you to be in that type of position in which you can get, you can initially turn back and turn through with the golf swing and allow yourself that ability to um, transfer your weight properly. So in this position alone, you can see that big difference. Now the second position we talked about here, was your ability to get a little over rotated as you go back? You get the club going back behind your body. You know, this is one of the big things here when you look here compared to when you look at, let's say, Rory McElroy. You know, here's Rory right here. As Rory goes to take the golf swing back, you can see it's right here. Club's right out here in front of him. And you can compare yourself here. You've drugged that club way back behind your body. So as you take the club up, you take the club up to the top of the golf swing, the first move is, because you're baseball, you drop that club right down back in position, but it's almost a loop. And when I say it's almost a loop, this is where we start from. We start from this position here. We take the club off our path or off our line. We raise up to the top, what we believe be to almost be our baseball, our position. So what you can see here at the top of your golf swing, and you, you take it up to that top point, which is almost like your top of your baseball swing. Then you drop the club back down, and it's almost a loop up to the top, and then we get back on plane of trying to get back in our position. So now from here, what we almost have to do is get the club going, and you can see how you get the drive of the right hip through it, but what you end up doing, you almost watch that right hand. There you go, right there. See that little rotation of that right forearm? That's exactly what we ended up working on uh, at the second part of the lesson. But you can see that right hand flipping it there, getting it up to the top, and we swing on through. So that's why we're seeing these big duck hooks or these big shots going back and through. When we see Rory, Rory keeps the club in front of his body, gets it up a little bit more vertical over that right shoulder, drops that club straight down. And at the same time, you see as he drops it down, you see it's almost that right elbow, everything moves down together, down and through at the target. Okay. That's easier said than done, but we got, I think we can do that with you, and you end up doing the same thing. So one of the first things I did with you here is moving to this position. One, getting back into that stance, but then two, I want you to almost feel yourself as you go to take the club back. I want you to hit this golf ball that's about 12 to 18 inches back behind you, and then when you got to about there, I'm going to draw the initial plane that you're at here. What I want to see is, I want to see as the club comes from this position, I want to see that club get roughly up over that right shoulder. And what we're going to see here, as I stop moving the camera, there we got my set, I'm set. All right, here. So let me reset things, let's erase things here. And what we're going to get a different plane here. Let's go here. And then we're going to connect you here. Let's just say right through that right shoulder. So somewhere in this position here is where I'd like to see that club. You know, when we take you back over here to the right-hand side and show you, all right, here's one. All right, let's see we're here. Back around. And you actually drop that club down to the inside of it and then flip that right hand. There we go. So you can already see that we're in a little bit more upright position. So one, 
let's compare it here. We're back here. All right, so from where we were previous to where we are now, we're in a little better position. Now, what I wanted to do in this case here is I wanted the hands to almost feel like we were going up over that right shoulder. So when we see this, this is a lot different position compared to where we see over here on the right side. And when I say that, I'm going to raise all these lines just so that you can see with everything, without everything being in the way here. But you can tell in relation here, when we draw that a straight line here, big difference, would you say? You can just see that difference where those hands are. One, we start from a little better position here behind us where it's a little more in front of us. You see it's, you know, it's almost in line with our body. We look at the position on the right, nowhere near our body. And it's starting to go behind us again, like I said. So we get up to the top, and there, and we'll just draw a little line there. So we got to here, and let's just draw our little line from there, okay? Here, 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 down and through. All right, from here, here. Hey, what do you know? Back down and through. Now, if you notice this, we still had just a little bit of that left hand, that little right hand, one to flip it. You see how you catch it to the inside part of the club here? So you see a little bit of difference, but as we come into play, you know, you, you can always scoot back just a little bit. But still at the same position as we look here, and we look to here. What we see initially, and what I wanted, to, wanted you to feel, getting even better here. Club gets up, club comes down, a little bit of that left hand coming into play. So as you swing up, swing up and through. Get a little less of that right hand, that right hand's almost that that softer position, kind of feeling it kind of lagging there, hitting the, and what you want to do is almost hit the back. You want to hit the ball with the back of your left hand rather than trying to flip it through. So as we bring the club down and through, you know, like we said, we want to feel that transition of the right hip coming through, getting that weight through the left side, and we hit the ball with the back of our left hand down through here. And as you start doing it, you start feeling a little bit more consistency. You start feeling that transfer through, you start seeing a lot straighter shot by just getting the club a little bit straighter at the back, at the top, feeling that transition down and through, and almost feel like you're hitting it with the back of that left hand as we come down and through the shot. So I come over here, push the ball back, down, and through. Now, when we feel the back of that left hand, it's almost the same thing that I talk about pitching. That right wrist, or that right uh, position of the wrist stays set all the way through. It doesn't flip the ball. When you flip it, you turn the toe shut. When you turn the toe shut, right like we see here, when we turn that toe shut, what happens here, closes the face, the ball starts out to the right and hooks to the left. All right, but if we can get that little less rotation with the right hand and feel the back of the left hand hitting that position as we come through, Almost like if you're a tennis player and trying to hit it with the back of your left hand with a tennis racket, that's kind of the feeling I want you to have. Kind of feeling that transition down and through, keeping that club face open or square as long as possible as you come down and through. Not getting that rotation of the forearms and right hand through the shot. All right, so we've seen that with the iron. Now with the wood, I didn't get a chance to get you on there on the wood. But as we notice with the wood, you know, we want to keep that three-quarter swing. We don't have to take it back as far. Keep that position right about here, and same motion down and through. Keep a smooth transition through. You don't have to try to kill it, all right? But we've got to get those rotation up back. You know, I, you work so well with the iron to get that back of that left hand hitting it when you were hitting straight as an arrow. But as soon as you got to that wood, it was like we were holding on until so everything was blocking out to the right, blocking out to the right, blocking out to the right. 
And then finally, once we finally start feeling that transition staying longer down and through, even hit a tee out past that ball out in front of the ball, that's when we start seeing those nice long drives down and through. And the thing about it was, you were saying, ah, I was probably hit it 240, 250. Now nah, you're hitting it more like 280, 290. And in, in all, all honesty, that two, 280 to 290 shot can play any golf course in St. Louis. Okay? So keeping this in mind here, you've got to stay within yourself when taking your golf swing. You know, you can't get too excited. You can't get too quick as you come down and through your shot. You know, keeping a smooth transition with the hands down and through allows you to keep hit more of that square or more of that straight shot. But what happens when you try to go too fast, too uh, quick of a rotation with the hands down through your shot? Well, we've seen what happened. Okay, there's that right to left shot. But if we can get the hands in this better position here compared to what we see on the right hand side, nine day different. Position on your right, your baseball swing. Position on your left, your golf swing. Okay. Now, Jake, if you have any questions, I want you to give me a call. 314-724-6539. Uh, or shoot me an email at michaelwyattgolf at gmail.com. Now, uh, if you have anything, you know, I mean, Jake, take a second. Take your phone. Record on your phone. Shoot me an email. Shoot me a text. You know, one of the things when you look at that, you can send it through Dropbox. You can send it via... There's a V1 app on your phone that you can get as well. Any questions at all? I know you're going off to Kansas, Kansas or going up to UMKC, uh, go back to school. If you get to play, having some troubles, shoot me a line. All right, sir, I'll be more than happy to help you at all. So any other questions, let me know, and we'll talk soon.